Hey guys, EST here, and boy am I excited about this project. I thought, what would be the cheapest way to put together a basic, like, solar power wall, kind of, except, you know, those are like $3,000. Let's put together one that's a little bit lower of a target. I just want to charge some USB devices, so USB GPSs, maybe some battery packs. Um, I do have an 18650 lithium charger that runs on USB, um, cell phones, you know, whatever. So all we need is 10 watts total in the whole system to be able to charge up anything on USB-C because all of my C devices only draw 10 watts. So I looked up all-in-one devices that do it, usually just battery packs with like a, a separate solar or like a solar onboard. And even a 5 watt one was like 60 bucks or more. So I thought, can we do it for cheaper? And it turns out, yes. So you guys are going to freak when you see how cheap I made this system. And yet it's pretty solid. So first up, from Renew on eBay for $21 free shipping, we've got this beautiful solar panel. Of course, I've uh, insulated the positive lead because it's right there, but you won't want to touch the chassis or touch them together unless you want to light your new solar panel on fire and uh, you might think, oh, but we're indoors. Oh, I got this thing at 11.91 volts just under my bedroom lights, which are like two LED bulbs. I don't know what kind of current we're looking at, but let's just say I wouldn't want to ground it out. So, uh... $21 for a 10 watt panel. Now you can get a single 100 watt panel on Amazon, eBay, you know, AliExpress, wherever, for eh, under 100 for sure. I've seen like 80s for like okay ones. A Little bit sketchy, a little bit, you know, bad construction, maybe lying about the specs, but you know, just generally okay reviewed ones. But this right here has perfect reviews. People said it is properly waterproofed. I inspected it for all the things I know that can go wrong with solar. It, it It's just perfect. So like I said, the, the brand of the manufacturer is Renew. Check them out on eBay. Not sponsored at all. I'm just telling you that I did two hours of research and this is the best solar panel there is. It is uh, 13 by 8 inches. Weighs eh, maybe pound and a half. And uh, already just in basic testing, it's pretty good. So I haven't put it together yet, but I'm impressed. Next up, we got... A uh, solar charge unit to charge up the batteries that I'm sure you're familiar with. It's, you know, that blue one from eBay. <laughs> I guess that's the official brand name, too. <laughs> so it's it's 30 amps capable, which at 12 volts is, you know, obviously more than 10 watts. So I don't have to worry about overloading it. Uh, whether they're lying about the specs, I don't know. But people have disassembled these on YouTube. They've done tests. They're like, yeah, it's okay. I mean, especially for the price, it's kind of okay. And we have USB ports right on it. Look at that. So I'm going to kind of offload it to a battery bank just for the project's sake because, you know, it's a solar battery system. But if you wanted to just go solar in, USB out, and just charge your devices, you're done. So it was $21 for the panel, $11 for the charge controller. That's right, a $32 system. So you could keep your smartphone charged until the batteries blow up years and years for $32. Allegedly. Now, I'm going to add in some fun little stuff, like I said. We have got, for, let's just say, way the hell too much money, some Sony Mirada batteries. The, it's either highest capacity or highest output or highest balance between them. I, I think it's the third one. Uh, 18650 batteries in the world. So, they are 3,300 milliamp hours, actually, not like fake labeling nonsense. I mean, Sony had these verified. And they can output... 33 amps per battery at 4.2 volts, of course, at full charge. So you multiply that out, that's a lot of watts per battery. Now, obviously, it's going to run out pretty quickly if you max them out, but uh, boy, are these things powerful. So, I mean, where you even find these when they're, like, banned from eBay and banned from Facebook Marketplace? You could look around. There's a lot of fakes. They're hard to get a hold of. I mean, I've got a source on them, but... They're so expensive. These right here cost more than everything you've seen so far. So how am I going to add them to the cost? I'm just not because these are free. I stole them out of a laptop battery. There you go. Uh, these are like Samsung CR26s or something like that. Uh, 2,600 milliamp hours a piece and like 17 amps output or something like that. Uh, perfectly acceptable for this use. And they're free. So just take apart, you know, a power tools drill battery pack, a laptop battery pack, and well, there you go. This is what's inside them. Ta-da. Totally free. Uh, if you wanted some super, super sketch ones off a of new egg or something that are like really lightweight and kind of crap, but they do technically exist and three of them together will put you above 12 volts. Oh, maybe three, four bucks a piece. So 12 bucks additional max. And then we do have a custom 3D printed from Motley Mods. 
uh, vape slide for 18650s. So that's the 3D printed part, and then we've got the uh, terminals. And those terminals uh, can do 14 gauge wire, which can actually carry like quite a bit of juice. So I also bought some 14 gauge wire. I way overpaid for it. My God, just go scrap something, take apart someone's fluorescent lights or something. Cut the wires off a of ballast. I don't know. Go find a broken electronic and just snip the cord. You know, go get some braided 18 gauge or something. I mean, let's see, for, for 50 cents, I saw a hair straightening iron at the uh, thrift shop. So just buy that, cut the cord off of it, and then just strip the cord, use that as wires. There you go. So I'll, I'll just consider that kind of like the batteries, really free. But um, I believe this was about six or seven bucks for a, just a custom printed vape sled mod. Now, if you're like seven dollars, whoa, pump the brakes there, Richie Rich. Okay, two dollars and fifty cents on eBay, triple eighteen six fifty sled in series. Here's the problem. This is like, I don't even know what gauge wire, but they themselves in one of the specs said, don't exceed 30 watts or you will blow these up. You will melt the wires. So, okay, we're not exceeding 30 watts. Nothing in the system is exceeding 30 watts, I guess. But if you were to use this as your battery pack and I don't know, the solar can't charge it faster than that, but you might be able to draw faster than that if you're charging, I don't know, I guess exactly four cell phones at once. So maybe just don't do that. And if you did, it would override the 10 watts of the solar anyway. But I don't know. I just, I don't like these. I, I'd pay extra for these. These are harder to find, but I don't know. If you had to, you could use one of these. So I might see some more equipment later, but I think all things considered, eh, 45 bucks tops on a bad day. That's not bad. So let's get this all wired together and test it. All right, we're outside. It's charging. Um, I'll give you a better angle in a second, but I just wanted to point out that uh, while it is working and um, it, it is definitely, you know, feeding it in about 11.7 volts, that battery pack is insanely hot just from sitting in the sun. And those aren't even black. I mean, I'm using some 2000 milliamp hour kind of whatever recycled ones before I put the actually nice batteries in. And, uh, man, that, that is a problem. So probably put like a 25 foot lead on the solar and then just put the rest of it inside and put the solar outside or something. Um, that, that would be my recommendation, but I did check the voltages with that, uh, much nicer, uh, multimeter there and they are accurate. So I did come up with a brilliant solution to keep the batteries out of the sun temporarily while I tested this. I wouldn't call it a permanent fix though. So, uh, you can see the screen, which, uh, unfortunately the camera is picking up the refresh rate there. It doesn't actually look like that in real life, but, um, I wanted to verify, okay, which voltage is it displaying right there? Cause the directions aren't perfectly clear and, uh, okay. 11.76 coming from the solar panel. And then the battery pack is at, I can't see it, but it was 11.6. So I believe that voltage being displayed right there is the battery pack voltage. And then you can see the little arrow uh, pointing to the right. It goes solar to battery. There you go. And then I've got the um, 12 to 14.4 volt output turned off. It's not like the terminals are touching, but I thought, well, why leave it on? So I intended to just pull the batteries out of that sled and use them. I'm not even really going to use the power output on the solar charge controller. But if I did, I'd probably put them to like some, you know, the string of LED lights or something. But I mean, my phone has an LED in it and I usually have a flashlight in like every room in the house. Oh, and they all run on 18650s anyway. So I wouldn't exactly be fumbling around in the dark to go find this and turn on, you know, some emergency lighting. So I'm not really using the power output, but I mean, you could, you could find all kinds of uh, creative uses for this, but uh, I do have a bit of an improvement for this, I would say. Oh, and the best thing is it makes it cheaper. Let me show you. This is going to be a lot simpler if I just show the diagram first and then show you the equipment in real life. So let's do that. So there's actually four ways to do this. And I think like two of them are cheaper than even what I quoted so far. So number one, I need a 12 volt to run to an inverter because I want to plug in real, you know, to the wall socket stuff. I want to run real appliances. Battery pack's a little small for that, but okay, you could do it. Real simple. Take the positive and negative output on the far right of the controller, put it to an inverter, turn the inverter on done. If you're going to do that, just spend 80 bucks on a deep cycle marine lead acid battery and then drop like 80 bucks on the 100 watt solar. I mean, that'll be more of a power wall, just saying. But I mean, like I say later, if you want to run a 20 watt laptop, this would do it. All right. Case number two, I just want to charge some dang lithium cells. Ignore the entire battery bank and just put a VC4 straight to the USB. Ta-da. And it has a capacity counter. It has all kinds of safety features. It shows you the current flow. It turns off the charge when it's done. I mean, this thing is amazing. So if you just want to charge up some 18650s, just bypass the entire battery pack. There's literally no reason to have them in series at all. If you don't need the 12 volt, you don't need the 12 volt. So just do this. It is about 10 bucks cheaper. 
Next, oh, I don't care about lithium cells or 120 volt appliances. I just want to charge some USB stuff. Well, if you're going to mount it all on like plywood anyway, uh, might as well, you know, put in like a car style 12 volt to 5 volt little USB dropper thingy. Just type in like car dash 12 volt USB socket or, you know, anything like that. You'll find these for like nothing. They're just a couple bucks. Do find one with the 2.1 amp though, because that'll charge a smartphone twice as quickly. And then you would just, you know, take some little wire and run it to the 12 volt output and there you go. Wouldn't even have to be thick wire because the most you're pulling through this is like 15 watts. Okay, you might be screaming this at your screen right now because it's so obvious, but instead of doing that, you could just plug your smartphone into the USB ports on the actual solar charge controller. I'm not 100% sure that those are powered by the battery bank. So I, I figured I'd show, oh, well, you could just hook up like a, a separate one to the output and there you are. So it's like, okay, cool, you've got a permanent install thing, but like, why? Because just do it this way. Um, that's a battery bank that can hold, first of all, eight 18650s, and you can run it with the cover off. So if you just want to charge up some batteries, that's another way to do it. The X-Tar is just a generally better, safer charger. I've never had this battery bank light my batteries on fire, but it's not what I would call a BMS, a battery management system. If you match all the brands and they're all the same age or they're all brand new cells, okay, cool, do it this way. But uh, the big thing with this one and why I wanted to show it is because it's portable now. You could bring this around in your pocket and you could charge up multiple of them. The X-Tar, it's not portable and it also doesn't output USB. But like I said, if you might want to do some USB stuff and you might want to have some 18650s, this is the best of both worlds. It's just not the 100% ideal way to charge up a ton of 18650s. Uh, the inside of it, though, it is spring-loaded. I mean, you can take them right out. It's not like you're soldering them in. It's quite nice. So those are the four major ways to complete this project. Let's actually show the equipment. So I've got an interesting uh, temporary solution to the heat problem. Uh, I've got this solar panel sitting in the windowsill. Nice, secure. You don't want, you know, any way for it to drop because if it shatters, it's useless. Uh, then we've got the charge controller sitting here, still charging the battery. And uh, the battery pack right next to it. So not the greatest. This is all metal. I mean, it's not ideal. I should at least put cardboard under it for insulation, but I'm not going to leave it like this. I just, you know, put it there to finish the video. Um, what you're really supposed to do is, um, you know, screw this into like uh, some plywood or something. You know, there, there's a screw hole right there. And, uh, you know, you can mount this pretty easily actually too. Just double-sided tape or wire ties or whatever. So it would be better if I ran like a 15 foot lead and just put this all the way outside, you know, facing the sun at a nice upward angle, um, you know, right on the roof. I'm probably going to do that eventually. So I could put a modular, like a breakaway plug where, uh, you know, you got positive and negative going to the battery pack. Just put like a little plug where you can unplug it and then just take the battery pack with you. Otherwise you could pop out the uh, cells and just use those. Now these are 4.2 volts each by themselves, but then in a row they're uh, 12 to like 14 point something volts. So if you want to use them as a 12 volt source to run a 12 volt, you know, operation, go for it. If you want to use them as just, oh, it's batteries and I'm charging them on solar, then, you know, just take them out of the sled. But I do have a different solution, but I will say that uh, if you want to use them as 12, but don't want to mess around with plugging and unplugging and swapping them and all that kind of stuff, here's a little 200 watt power inverter. Uh, you can see it's got the, the two AC outlets right there. Sorry about the bad lighting. And uh, turn it on, turn it off, real simple. And um, it's got the two terminals right there, 12 volt in. And I think this one is pretty flexible. If you get a really good one, it can go up to like 18 volts. I won't care what you feed it, but uh, this should be pretty clean 12 volt coming out of here, honestly. Uh, and it will either come from the solar or from the battery pack or kind of both as a pass through, depending upon how much light there is. So you can just take some nice 14 gauge like this, put it into the, uh, the outputs right here, turn on the output, ta-da, which it's actually on. I'm going to turn it off. There we go. And then uh, hook it up to this and boom, you got an, an emergency outlet that runs on solar. And then the battery pack would let it run when the sun's not shining. Real simple, little little solar power wall. So these uh, little guys, boy, you can get a, a even better one than this, like a 400 watt at Harbor Freight for under 20 bucks, probably closer to like 14, 15. Um, wires you can just steal off of anything or you know, go buy them, I guess, for a couple bucks. So it wouldn't add much to turn this into like a true, like permanent-ish install power wall. But I said at the beginning of the video, what I want to do is charge USB devices. So I have a suggestion. Get rid of all of these, get rid of the sled. This thing was an absolute pain, these two right here, to get these like connected properly. These aren't insulated as well as I wanted. None of them are soldered. Building that sled was more of a pain than I anticipated. 
So I would say completely ignore this, unplug it, and just use the onboard USB ports, and I'll show you why. Uh, number one, I mean, we've got an XTAR VC4 charger that'll charge pretty much any lithium cell. I've got 18650s in it, so let's plug that into the USB port and see what happens. And look at that. By the way, these are amazing for the price. Absolutely love them. So you can see it's only getting 0.3 amps, maybe, just under that but it is charging them. Now it's sharing, I assume, between that and the battery pack. So if I unplug the battery pack, I'd probably be up to maybe like 0.5 or higher. Um, but yeah, I'm charging 18650s and this is a lot simpler. You don't have to wire anything. It's much more controlled. It's probably got surge suppression. Uh, it lets you know the flow, the amp amount, which uh, this currently does not read in any way. So I like this. I, I would say this is a, a nicer solution than that battery pack right there, except that battery pack can run a 12 volt inverter. But if you're not interested in that, I would say just do it this way. Cut out this entire section. So you might recognize this from a former video. Uh, this battery pack is currently at 84%. It holds uh, eight of these. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. So there's eight 18650s in here, making it uh, over 20,000 milliamp hours, actually. And it has a nice little flashlight. I actually did a review on this. It's kind of cool. So uh, this is portable. You can take it around and run a phone or a GPS for, like, a week off it i mean the capacity of this thing is ridiculous if you put like samsung 26 c's in there i mean they're flirting with like 3,000 milliamp hours a piece times eight that's 24 amp hours that's like a small car battery i mean that's like absolutely beast so this you can charge up on the solar rig um put it right straight to the usb in fact i'll do that so if i ho hook it up to the solar rig there on the usb it's charging there we go no battery pack needed but then I could actually leave the cover off of this, believe it or not, and this is still there, the button and the display are still there. Um, and then I could just pop out the 18650, so I could actually charge eight of them at once, and then also have this to run USB, because uh, there's two USB ports on there to concurrently run or charge a smartphone, a GPS, you know, just whatever. So I think this is probably the best way to do it. Um, these are around 10 bucks. I think you can get one that holds six uh, vertically or horizontally like that for a little bit cheaper. I think that's kind of the best of both worlds as long as you don't need a 12 volt source to run an inverter and run like an actual appliance. But uh, boy, you'd need a bigger battery than this to run an appliance for long. <laughs> But if you wanted to run like a laptop, a modern laptop draws, you know, 20, 30 watts max, really, um, you could put an inverter to this, maybe add a couple more batteries and just run it. I mean, the, this is literally about the battery capacity of a modern laptop. So you can run a laptop on this battery bank for about three or four hours. So that has been my guide to building the absolute cheapest solar power source that you possibly can. Um, I may have mentioned this early in the video, but you can get uh, these battery banks right here, but with like a solar panel on the front right here. It tends to be like one to two watts on a good day, probably closer to one watt. So it's going to, it's going to charge really slow. I have a lithium polymer one with like a built in like flat uh, battery instead of these nice round ones. And it takes, I think, 16 hours to charge all the way up. And it's like three amp hours. So like 3000 milliamp hours. It, it's pretty sad. So, I mean, you saw the solar panel, it's like 13 by 8 and it only does 10 watts. Yeah, it, it's going to be better than a solar-powered battery bank. And the other thing is then you have to leave the whole battery bank sitting out in the sun, which is insane because that will cook your lithium batteries and kill them. So, not only do I not consider that an option, but it costs way more. Like, a, a really good waterproof one is like 110 and like a kind of okay one is like 60 so you're still not even going to beat the price of this, and it's not even close to the amount of solar output, or solar input, depending upon how you look at it. So my opinion, this is the best way to do it. If you have any other ideas, any upgrades, um, yes, I know I should ground it at some point. I would I would ground one of these, the chassis, to the ground, obviously. Um, <laughs> probably something I should mention for safety. But uh, other than that, yeah, I, I am absolutely shocked that this is up and running for for sure under 50 bucks. I mean, that is pretty impressive. So if you're impressed as well, send this to all your friends who might also think it's cool and build one too. So you can charge stuff at their house when the grid goes down. And uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Check out the rest of the videos on this channel for more cool content. And I will see you guys next time.